Well, greetings once again. This is Dr. Bill Bailey, and this is the Chromist Netcast. This is our third entry into the world of netcasting here on the Chromist Netcast. We've got some neat things for you this week on the program. Uh, first thing I want to talk about on the Chromist website. Now, as you know, the Chromist website is C H R O M E S T, Chromist.com, as it says there on the screen. We've got a couple of things that we want to talk about this week. Kind of ties into what we talked about uh, briefly last time when we talked about the Dropbox file system app that you can add to your Chromebook to connect Dropbox to your file system there on your Chromebook. Well, now they have added some additional functionality. You can connect to an SMB or Samba type uh, connection. In other words, if you have a Linux server like I do here at home and I want to connect to my Sam, uh, Samba file shares, then I can do that. A SIF share, if you're on a Windows network and they have SIF shares, then you can connect that as well. Uh, Microsoft OneDrive, let's say you have some applications that you've stored some uh, documents or so forth into OneDrive. Well, now you can connect that to your Chromebook. Uh, SFTP sites, Secure File Transport Protocol, SFTP. You can now connect those sites to your Chromebook as part of your file system. Very cool. And then WebDAV sites. Uh, WebDAV, of course, is a method to connect network shares across the internet, across the web, and that WebDAV protocol is supported now uh, through an application on your Chromebook, which is kind of nice. Now, to do this, all you got to do is go to your lower left corner, click on the little, you know, magnifying glass uh, looking app there, uh, or launcher, click that, and then it will open up your uh, applications. I'm going to go ahead and do that. And if you don't see all of your applications, you can click the All Apps icon once you get in there. And one of the things you will see is your file system. It's probably in one of your first screens. Uh, it's just called Files. And it has a little, it's a little blue icon with pic a picture of a folder. So you click that, it'll open up your folder for your files and that is your file system on the Chromebook. Now, one of the new options that has been added recently, if you've upgraded your Chromebook, which is very easy to do, it just shows up as an icon that you need to reboot, and it will do an upgrade. So if, you, if your Chromebook is updated, it will have Add New Services as an option. If you click that, it comes up with a box of available services that you have not yet mounted. Okay, so there'll be a list there only if you haven't mounted those options. Okay, so uh, if you do that, you can select from those, you can set them up. Once you do set them up, then they will be in your menu system. So you go back to your launcher icon that looks like an hourglass down in the corner, and it will now show up as SFTP, OneDrive, WebDAV, those different icons for those applications. Really pretty slick. Now, one other thing I want to share with you is a further option, and that is Jolie Cloud. Jolie Cloud, of course, is a French application. Jolie Cloud was around a long time, even before Chromebooks. And it was a way to turn a simple laptop, like a netbook, you know, very small netbook, into really a Linux operating system, is what Jolie Cloud started out as, for those old netbooks, made them more functional. Well, Jolie Cloud has kind of seen the handwriting on the wall, and they've seen that Chromebooks and other uh, Linux laptops have kind of taken over that world. So what they've done is they've kind of transformed. They still have the Jolie Cloud software, but they've transformed what they're doing, and now they have Jolie Cloud Drive. And the Drive application, you can go to the Google Play Store, you can connect to your Drive app, Create an account on Jolie Cloud, and you can, through Jolie Cloud, you can connect Dropbox and other file services. Now, the free one, you can do it for free, but the free one is limited in the number of connections you can have. If you do the paid version, you have a lot of possibilities. And the nice thing about it is it gives you one place, whether you use it through the browser on a PC or on a Chromebook or where, wherever you happen to be using it, you can get to Jolie Cloud and kind of consolidate all of these services into one nice clean interface. Pretty neat. 
I'm not saying it's, you know, the be-all and end-all and that you ought to use it. I personally don't use it that much. I have an account. It's available, but I don't find myself using it all that much. But it may be just what you're looking for. So I did want to share that with you. Now, the other thing I wanted to talk about this week is something that, you know, it's one of those things, if I had all the money in the world <laughs> and it was available to me, I would spend some money and get this. But... It's not something that I absolutely need, so I'm not going to run out and get it. But it looks really cool, <laughs> all right? It is a new uh, piece of hardware from Acer. And as you know, I use an Acer Chromebook. That's what I have here is an Acer Chromebook. It's the uh, C720P, which is the touchscreen version. And uh, Acer has come out now with a new Chrome base, uh, which is what they call their desktop for Chrome. Now you say, what do I need a desktop for Chrome? Well, once you see this hardware, you'll be pretty impressed. There's a picture of it there on the Chromist uh, website. I encourage you to go check it out. But the press release from Acer says, Acer announced today, now this was back in April they announced this, uh, the latest addition to its industry-leading Chrome OS device family, the Acer Chrome Base series, complementing its existing Chromebooks and Chrome Box. Now the Chrome Box is a small, as it name implies, a little box that gives you a Chrome operating system in a box. You connect your own uh, monitor and keyboard and mouse and network to it, and you have a Chrome desktop with Chrome Box. Now they're fairly inexpensive, relatively, but the Chrome base here gives you touch-enabled screen already built in. It's an all-in-one so that the screen, the touch screen is available, and then keyboard and mouse is available with it, comes with it, and it gives you a 15.6 inch display. Uh, it gives you, let's see, full HD resolution, 178 degree viewing angle, a 10 point touch screen technology, boots up in less than 10 seconds. <laughs> For a desktop, that's pretty cool. Uh, Chromebase comes with a complimentary 100 gigabytes of Google Drive storage, uh, so users will have plenty of space. It comes with an NVIDIA Tegra uh, K1 quad-core processor, helping it deliver responsive and rich multitasking experience and stay quiet when running under heavy workloads. Uh, I believe, pretty sure this is true, it is fanless, can be wall-mounted. Uh, it has basically like a, like a bracket that you can set up. It can be used in public areas if you're looking for a kiosk system. It has two 3-watt audio speakers, provides HDMI out, USB 3.0, USB 2.0 ports, in addition to 802.11abgn Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 4.0 for wireless connectivity of other devices like additional keyboards and you know various other things you might want to try with it. Sounds pretty cool, all right? So I would love to play with it, but it's not something I'm going to rush out and buy, all right? <laughs> so trust you enjoyed it this week. Remember to come back to the Chromas Netcast for all the shiny information on Chrome.